Lot did not know where his blessings were coming from. May we never be like Lot. Amen. Always recognize where your blessing is coming from. It's always coming from Jesus. Can you say amen? We are blessed because he is in our lives. Hallelujah. Joseph was blessed because God was with him. In the midst of your blessings, never separate from Christ. Hallelujah. Verse 12. Abraham dwelt in the land of Canaan and Lot dwelt in the cities of the plain. So the Canaan is highlands, all right? Mountainous, hilly. The plains are down below. So Lot went down, Abraham went up. All right, and pitched his tent even as far as Sodom, verse 13. But the men of Sodom were exceedingly wicked and sinful against the Lord. So here Lot is materialistic, he's money-minded, he doesn't care for the promise of God because the promise of God was in the mountains. <clears throat> Amen. <clears throat> Blessed by association with Abraham, but never thankful, not grateful. Now, think about this. Do you want to be surviving based on the association with people? Or do you want to stand on your own faith? Always stand on your own faith. Can you say amen? See, some people are like, ah, oh, it's okay, I can, don't have to work hard, don't have to study hard, don't have to pray. Uncle is there who will give me a job. But that formula is not working anymore. Even in Nagaland. It's not working. We are depending on a tribe, we are depending on our uncles because we think we will be blessed by our association because we are a major tribe, because we have many officers. But that formula is not working anymore. Everyone has to stand on their own faith with God. Can you say Amen? Hallelujah. He was a selfish man. And he went with his eyes. He saw the good land. In other words, he was led by opportunity. He followed what seemed good to his eyes. Amen. He had no interest in the plan and purpose of God. He was following his own will. He was a self-directed man. And from the moment he left Abraham, he went astray. There was no moral foundation in his life. Here the lesson is, don't go with what you see with your eyes. Woman, when you see a man having a Scorpio vehicle or a Toyota car and it looks smart and he has a good officer's job and everyone looks at him and sees that it is good, don't go with what you see with your eyes. Pray. Even the men also. Sometimes I should tell this more to the men because men are more led by their eyes. Amen. Amen. Go with the inner beauty that you see with the wisdom of God. Can you say amen? See, don't decide based on your eyes. Lord made a mistake. K-pop. K-pop is all about the eyes only. It's true. The men, the women there, it's all about the eyes. It's all about plastic surgery. It's all about putting a flim out there to make it seem like everything is beauty. But I tell you, K-pop culture is ugly. It is empty. It is shallow. It is ugly, I tell you. See, the, the, the trick of Satan is always to make everything look beautiful on the outside, but inside it's ugly. In the kingdom of God, sometimes God's blessings and God's people does not look beautiful. Because we're just genuine. Amen. So you have to have the wisdom of God. K-pop is absolutely rotten to the core. I'm not talking about the people. God loves those people. But the culture behind it. The philosophy behind it. And our government is bringing K-pop here. What wisdom are they running with? Amen. We have to be discerning people. Don't take hook, line, and sinker whatever our government says and whatever they bring. Amen. Hallelujah. 
Now, Lot dwelt in the cities of the plain. That means he went down. He went down. From the mountains, from the high place of God, he went to the low place of sin. In other words, his morals, his values, he compromised and he came down. And that was the beginning of his downfall. So the lesson here for us is this. Are we pitching our tent in the plains? Husbands, wives, parents, are you pitching your family's tent near Sodom and Gomorrah? In other words, what are the values we are bringing into our families? What are the values we are living by? What culture are we allowing at home? How, what are we showing? What, what are our kids watching, let's say? What are we watching? What kind of values are we promoting? What are we reading? All of that is about pitching your tent in the plains or in the mountains. What is a tent? Your tent is a dwelling place. It is where you sit and you relax. In the mountains where Abraham was, he was relaxing up in the fresh air. Down in the plains, Lot is breathing the dusty air, the polluted air, polluted with sin. Abraham did not have to be delivered from Sodom because he was always up in the mountains with God. See, in the, in the scriptures, the mountains are always a type of spending time with God because Moses went up to the mountain. God calls people to the mountain. Abraham was always there in the presence of God. He pitched his tent in the presence of God. Lord pitched his tent in the world. He brought Hollywood into his house. He brought Bollywood into his house. He brought K-pop into his house. Yeah. Kanye West. He said, all of this, Hollywood, rap, pop. It is not Hollywood. It's not rap. It's pop. Kanye West said, it is advertising evil spirits. Rap is an advertisement of evil spirits. Hollywood is an advertisement of evil spirits. Somebody who was there almost lost his mind because of the oppression he went through, come out and now seeing it, declaring that this is an advertising of evil spirits. We should think about that. See, when Lot went down, first he was in the plains, but because he was constantly exposed to the spirit of the place, it kept on seducing his heart, and then he went closer to Sodom, pitched his tent closer. First he was in the plains, then he went closer to Sodom. It was almost like sin was attracting his heart like a magnet. See, some Christians, after they're born again, they want to live on the border of Assam and Assam and Dimapu. You know. They want to be Nagas, but they also want to be Assamese. So when it's convenient for them, right, they want to stay on the border. Oh, I'm Christian. But when they are with their friends, oh, it's all right. I can hang out with my friends. I can party. I can do everything. But when they come to church, I can be godly. I can get involved here. I can do this. So we want to have the best of both worlds. Like Lot. Amen. Lot exposed himself. To the dusty plains. The dust is always a type of sin in the scripture. He was not up in the mountains exposed to the presence of God. And see, when he exposed himself, the gates of influence, there are gates in your body and soul which influence your heart, where sin comes. The first place is your eyes. Your eyes. What looks good to you? The second gate of influence of sin is your ear. What you hear. The third is your nose. You go to the bar. I won't smoke, I won't drink, but you are smelling. All that smoke, all that alcohol. I tell you, your smoke, uh, your nose. Not your smoke, your nose. <laughs> your nose will activate certain things in your brain that causes desire in your body to taste the fourth is your mouth your taste 
See, how many people became drug addicts during our time when we were our generation? Taste kuribina. Taste, it's okay, just taste once. And they tasted once and twice and they became hooked to heroin. Taste is not a gate. And the, the fifth is feelings, your feelings. If you're always in a place where you are seeing things, hearing things, songs, and it brings forth a carnal feelings, and you see your people all around partying, and it's all about carnal, it's about chasing this girl, it's about chasing that boy, and they're all talking about those things, I tell you, it will open up the influence for your eyes, ears, nose, mouth, feelings, to be all influenced by wrong things. And the more you expose yourself to that, Guess what? It's going to come inside you. And that's what happened to Lot. He pitched his tent close to Sodom. And in Genesis chapter 19, finally we see him in Sodom. Okay. Now after Lot left, we're going to go there later. Chapter 14, Genesis chapter 14. Lot was captivated, uh, captured by in fact, the whole of Sodom was captured by the army of four kings. Abraham had to go and deliver Lot. So again, here is a type of how when we are in sin, we get captured. In the old days, when you are captured, you become a slave. You become a servant to other people. Sin will enslave you, make you do what you don't want to do. As Paul says, your flesh. When it controls you, it makes you do what you don't want to do. It makes you go where you don't want to go. There is no peace. There is no joy in that sin. But still, you are addicted. You cannot help it. Abraham went down with 318 of his servants and he delivered Lot. Amen. So here again we see Abraham's heart. Abraham did not say, good for him. Since he left me, good for him. Abraham did not say that. He did not say good riddance. Serves him right. Abraham had a heart for Lot. He fought for Lot. In other words, it shows that Abraham loved souls. This is a type of a righteous man who loves people, who cares for people, who cares for souls to be saved in, in Africa, in Assam, in West Bengal, in Nepal. He cares for souls to be saved and he will fight for those souls either in prayer or by supporting a missionary or by paying for evangelistic crusades for souls to be saved. You can be righteous and have no care in your heart for souls. But God cares for souls. Jesus died for souls. If we have a heart for God, we will care for souls. Can you say amen? So we see Abraham had a heart for the kingdom. Lot, after being delivered, guess what happens? He goes right back to Sodom. Some Christians, after they're delivered, they go right back to the sin. They come to church, they cry. And then they'll go back right back to their sin. What does it show? No heart for God. Amen. Hallelujah. And in Lord's life here, we see the price of sin, the high price of low life. Low life has high price. All right, we need to be aware of that. See, when he was exposed to all of that sin, first, sin attracts you. It says it is nothing wrong, it is harmless. You begin to think of it, meditate, begin to desire it. You begin to expose yourself to places of sin. So if you are always in parties, always in worldly activities, and so busy for those things, and not for Canaan, so busy for Sodom activities, and not for Canaan activities. What are Canaan activities? Up in the mountains, the presence of God, prayer, the word of God. Those are Canaan activities. Sodom activities are all the worldly stuff. If you are so busy for those things and not for those, sin will seduce you. Amen. See, some Christians, they want the easy Christian life. Up in the mountains, it's quite difficult. Christian life is not always easy. It is impossible without the grace of God. Amen. But there's always fresh air up there. Up in the hills. 
people prefer the comfortable life of the plains. Compromise Christianity. Where you don't have to stand for your beliefs. Where you don't have to have awkward conversations with your friends. When your friend says, hey, why don't you drink? It's okay to drink. Ah, okay, fine, whatever. We just want to compromise and not have those awkward conversations. So we give in to it. Third, we become active participants like Lot. We begin to dabble in it, become active participants in it. When you become active participants in sin, what it does is this. Sin twists our thinking. The right thing becomes wrong now and the wrong things become right. It twists our thinking. A lot of people think that homosexuality is okay now because we are living in the 21st century. But the Bible does not change according to changes in culture. Can you say amen? So here, you see, soul, the mind and the heart of Lot was so vexed and oppressed. His morals were so twisted that when the two angels were there and the men of Sodom came and demanded for those two angels to come out so that they can know them carnally, Lot said, don't take them, take my two daughters. Offered his two daughters to be raped by those men. His morals had become so twisted. Not only that, study Genesis chapter 19, all right? Not now, but go home and study. When, when Lot told his sons-in-law, hey, we have to go because tomorrow this city is going to be destroyed by fire, guess what his sons-in-law did? Laughed at him. In other words, he lost his testimony. Even his own family members did not believe in him. So they did not go with him. But look at the grace of God. Look at verse 15. When the morning dawned, the angels urged Lot to hurry, saying, Arise, take your wife, take your two daughters who are here, lest you be consumed in the punishment of the city. And while he lingered, he did not want to go. While he lingered, he was bargaining, even in the midst of being about to be destroyed. The man took hold of his hand, literally had to be dragged out of Sodom, his wife's hand and the hands of his two daughters, the Lord being merciful to him. Can you see the grace of our Lord here? If you study the lives, it seems Abraham is more righteous than Lot. But if you look at it from God's viewpoint, both don't deserve to be righteous. And both, because of their faith, were declared righteous by God. The only difference is this. Lot lost everything. He was a defeated righteous man and he ended up in a miserable place. On the other hand, Abraham was a blessed righteous man. Which one do we want to be? This represents two types of Christians. Both saved. Both righteous by faith. But one victorious and the other defeated. One following God's will and obeying the other living for self, self-directed. And that is why God is calling us as a church, all of us, to be circumcised in our flesh. Amen. To live lives of obedience to God. To give the Holy Spirit first place in our lives. And to live with a trust in God daily. In the middle of your pain, trust in God. In the middle of your loss, trust in God. In the middle of going through difficult times when prayers are not being answered, trust in the Lord. Don't go ahead and trusting in your own self. You see, where did it all begin? Lord trusted in his own eyes. He looked at what he saw and he saw that it was good for him and he trusted in his own decision and he left Abraham. Adam and Eve looked at the tree and they saw that it was good for food and they trusted in their own decision and then they fell. It always begins when you begin to trust in yourself and not in God. God is taking too long home. I need to help myself. That's what some people say. Amen. I don't think I can trust in God to find a spouse for me. 
I'll have to do it myself. I don't think I can trust in God for my business. Trusting in God, no profit. I'll have to do it my own way. The way of the world. And that's where people begin to go down low. They go down low. I don't believe I can trust in God to change my children. Trust in the Lord. Don't go out from that high place of trusting in the Lord. Amen. Psalms 23 verse 6 and let's close here. Are we as believers following our own will, self-directed lives? Or are we following God? That makes a whole lot of difference in how we'll be blessed. How we will end up in the end. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Who wrote this? David. David was not a perfect man. He knew what it means to be a backslider in modern terms. Adultery, murder, deceit. And yet he came back to the place of his fellowship with God. And he continued to trust in the Lord. And this is what he says, surely his goodness and his mercies shall follow me all the days of my life. That is the place where we need to camp our faith. This scripture. This is the place where we need to trust in God daily. Don't leave this place. If you're going through difficulty, you're going through scarcity, you're going through difficult times, and you may be thinking that God has left you, you may be thinking God does not love you, God doesn't favor you as He does pastors and so on. No! God loves every one of you. God died for every one of you. God's gift of righteousness is upon every one of you. Amen! And His surely goodness and His mercies will follow all of you, all the days of your life. We just have to believe and trust in God. Can you say Amen? Amen. Let's close our eyes and bow our heads. Hallelujah.